right, so uh, just kind of uh, the thoughts of the A&M game looking back. Uh, I, I thought those kids played extremely hard. I really did. Uh, uh, they, they fought to the end, and that kind of shows you, you know, that they're buying into the culture that I talked about. And, um, you know, you can always live with that when kids play with extreme effort and they fight all the way to the end. Uh, I wouldn't have that any other way. You know, like when you have issues when kids stop playing, uh, that's that's when you uh, really have to dig down deep and start really fighting the culture. But I, I'm really pleased with how that was. You know, for the opening game, uh, relatively clean with penalties. You know, typically you go into that game you know, uh, you watch a lot of college football over the weekend, and there was a lot of teams making a lot of mistakes, um, you know, that kind of shoot themselves in the foot. But that wasn't the issue with us. I um, thought we played a very clean game from penalties. Uh, you know, when you go down to the deciding factors of it all, you can't turn the ball over. That's probably one of the main things, which, uh, you know, Gresh and Vid both had two, uh, two interceptions, which uh, put our defense in some pretty bad spots and bad situations where, um, you know, we just got to keep getting better from that point. We got to make sure that we are being efficient, uh, taking the high percentage throw, and you know, know when to throw the ball away, uh, just be more disciplined in our progressions. But that's something that's going to keep coming with reps. Uh, I know that's probably going to be a question is about Vit and Gresh, but right now we're just going to rotate those guys all the way through practice because I thought they both played about the same when you, when you look at it. So, uh, you know, we, we got to keep digging deep and trying to figure out which uh, which guy is going to be the guy that takes this thing away. You know, you got to, uh, you know, I, I thought oh, with with them speaking, you know, that's going to go that direction. Um, you look at the defense and the special teams, I thought they played at an extremely high level, uh, especially due to circumstances and their back kind of against the wall. I thought they did a really good job, uh, played with effort, created some turnovers, uh, sparked some momentum. Uh, you know, very pleased with that. You look at special teams, and you know Seamus O'Kelly in his first college game. I thought it was, uh, I thought he handled it the right way. That's actually the third game that he has ever been to see in college football, which is uh, actually pretty interesting. His brother's a kicker at James Madison. He's been to two James Madison games, and he's been to Kyle Field. So those are three experiences that kids had. So uh, thought he handled that pretty well. As, uh, you know, but that's our deal. We we've got to we've got to continue to get better. I know we got a lot of work, but uh, that's that's why you do this. You know, uh, the 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 teams are playing the best teams are playing their best ball at the end of the season. I want what I want to see is a lot of improvement from week one to week two, and and that's what we've been challenging them. Um, we've got a tough Wyoming opponent coming in. Uh, obviously, they're coming off a big win versus an SEC opponent. Uh, they're very disciplined, tough. They play hard. I really like what Coach Bowl does. Uh, just the culture that he's created, how efficient they play. Um, you know, it, it's going to be a tough task, but I think our kids are fired up to get out here in Wacker Field and, uh, uh, you know, cut it loose in front of a, a home crowd. But, you know, overall, I think we're in good spirits. You know, it's just we, we got to get back to work and make sure that we are preparing with a purpose and uh, we're putting everything in to, to put a good game plan out there versus Wyoming. So, you know, it's, it's a process driven week. We got to take the steps. We had a good work day today. I uh, need to have a solid day tomorrow and um, we'll get out there in front of the home crowd and, and run around a little bit. So questions. You know, to, to clarify with, with Gresh and Vit, you're not sure who the starter is for this Saturday, right? No, not not ready to say that. Um, I, I think based off their performance, they're pretty even. And, you know, a lot of you guys have watched their progression throughout all of fall camp, really from spring, fall camp, all the way to now. And it's really a flip of a coin between those two, if you, if you kind of look at it. So. I, I think you're going to see them both get some pretty good action and, and see where it goes from there. Just see who's going to be the guy that's going to you know, lead this team and find ways to put the ball in the end zone. You know, four picks between the two of them. What did you see on those interceptions? Was it more not going for the Crescens ride? Was it the level of competition they were playing? What, what in your opinion? Um, you know, there's a, there's a couple things. You know, Gresh, uh, actually, Bitt's first one, you know, there was a, a bust assignment with the receivers, you know, where uh, we had a screen play that we probably ran for a while. but. Uh, it, it, kind of a hesitation, stopped running, you know, and then they threw it to the, obviously Texas A&M. But, um, you know, I think a lot of it, too, was just kind of visualizing, just kind of guessing that that, that route was going to be open at a certain moment based off of kind of looks that they got. I thought A&M did a, a good job at baiting them into some things. They had some compliments of making it look like a certain coverage and then getting to something else, which, uh, again, that's going through your progressions. But, uh, you know, you look at uh, – the one with Gresh right after the interception that Belo had, the first play out, he just underthrows the ball. You know, and he's got to 
have more precision with his timing. You know, he was off a little bit. He was trying to throw the ball 50, 60 yards down the field, and he was doing a three-step and hitch and, and uh, kind of hold for another second, which, you know, uh, Tom Brady can't even make that throw. You know, it's uh, it, those are the things that we've got to be precise on is making sure that our timing and, and uh, our accuracy is fine and, and making sure we're going through progressions too. So it was kind of a mixture of everything, timing on the quarterbacks, you know, receivers on their indecision and just guessing where the where the open receiver is probably going to be. You know, what about the running game? Eight net rushing yards, but a lot of that was playing from behind. You got to start passing the ball. How do you get the running yeah. game more involved this week? Yeah, that was that was something that we knew we'd probably struggle with a little bit. That A and M's very talented up front. You know, it, I, I laughed because uh, I've talked to the O line coach at A and M, and even you know through Jimbo, you know they they've had trouble running the ball on that defense in practice. So uh, it. You know, not for a moral victory, but we knew that it was going to be a tough challenge for us. That um, we we're going to have to get them out, get the ball on the perimeter, and spread them out a little bit. Where we were disappointed is, is when we spread the ball out, we had favorable boxes to run the ball into that we couldn't establish a run game. And I, I looked at Bob pretty much, you know, halfway through the second quarter and said, "Let's kind of axe the run game," because he was staying persistent with it. He uh, he was trying to run it, you know, and they, they were giving us the right boxes to run it into, but. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, they're kind of outmanning us up front, so we had to get to some other options where that goes into the efficiency of just getting the ball out of your hand, being accurate, and, you know, taking those little chunk yards plays. Coach, has the team's energy stayed high after the loss? I mean, have, how have they responded? I, I think they've responded pretty well, you know. Um, I, I think they they were pleased with how they fought. You know, but I think they recognize that they can be so much better. And it comes down to what we preach. You guys have heard me say this and hear a million times about we can't beat ourselves. And we beat ourselves in a lot of ways. You can't turn the ball over four times to a quality opponent, especially in their territory. And uh, But uh, I, I think the defense has got some confidence right now, a little bit of swagger to them, just based off of uh, how competitive they've played against A&M and had some pretty good turnovers and you know red zone stops that were pretty vital to what we were trying to do. But um, I think the offense is is more on the side of hey we, we got to keep getting better and we're just and I we're staying on them. We brought them up here Friday after the game. We coached them up, we practiced them, we learned from our mistakes, you know, and then we got them out here again on Sunday and and did the whole thing again. You know, I, and that's kind of the approach we're having with these guys is we need to keep improving, keep seeing strides from game to game because we're not close to where we want to be. And uh, I think they understand that and they bought into it and. Uh, I think these kids are pretty resilient in terms of, you know, putting that game behind and moving on to the next one. What are you expecting out of Wyoming this week? I, I think they're going to be a ball controlled. They're going to be, they're going to establish the run game. That's what they want to do. They want to run the football. Um, I think they got a great quarterback. Uh, he does, he does a really good job at, at being able to do QB run game, which is, is unique. You know, they've, they're, they're going to get into the perfect run call, but they've got so many variations of the run. And uh, they take a lot of pride in being a physical team. You know, defensively, they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to keep the ball in front of them in a way and, and be very disruptive with the defensive line. And, you know, we, we've got to make sure that we're all on the same page up front because they're going to be disruptive. But uh, I, I think that they're a very efficient team. You know, they're probably the definition of efficiency when you when you look at it. And that's how they win games is ball control. and and uh, you know, making sure that they they don't beat themselves. And you look at the Missouri game, and Missouri ended up beating themselves. You know, like they did a great job of creating three turnovers. You know, you have three turnovers, and Wyoming has uh, zero. You know, and they scored 17 points off of those turnovers. So you know, that's that's kind of the deciding factor of it. So uh, again, they're efficient, and we got to make sure that we're not beating ourselves because they'll expose you. You know, a little bit back to your run game. With Anthony Taylor, it seemed like he, he came out of the game a little early. You were saying it was cramps afterwards. Is he still going to be your starter, your bell cow this week, or is it kind of by committee? It's going to be by committee. You know, I, that's another spot. You know, he's, he is playing in the game. Um, you know, I think it's, it's going to be uh, – we're still trying to find – there's a lot of unknowns. We're still, still trying to find our go-to guys on offense. You know, um, they are a younger team in my mind, you know, just uh, from experience-wise. But uh, and just the continuity of being around each other for a while, so we still got to figure that out. You know, I, I see Coach McGuire moving the O line around pretty frequently. You look at the receivers; we played a lot of different ones of them. You saw Jalen Gibson and a slot receiver in the game. You saw all running backs, you know, getting reps. You saw three to four tight ends getting reps as well. So there, there's a lot of guys we're still trying to find answers to on offense. You were saying that Wyoming likes to control the ball, the time of possession, and all of that. But you have a pretty strong front seven. If we were Texas State, and we kind of saw that 
at A and M. Do you feel confident that that you can you can take time of possession in your favor with that defense? It's going to be difficult, you know, and, and that's something that you know they're good on offense, and they do an extreme job at, at running the ball. And what they do is they just they stick to it and stick to it and stick to it, and then eventually someone's going to get out of gap and, and they're not going to make a tackle, and that's what you saw versus Missouri. And uh, uh, we got to make sure that we're bringing it every single play, and we've got to tackle and get them down. You know, I, I think you want to get them in longer situations than you do. Uh, through the methodical process of four or five yards at a time and get into a third and short. You know, I think we want to try to get them behind the chains as much as we possibly can. You know, defensively, you kind of touched a little bit on, on your defense. You saw some young guys kind of get out there. Did you like what you saw from them? You know, Cameron Winters was your leading tackler, and d did you like what you saw from them I on did. that big stage? You know, they we, we had some, you know, we were cautious about it all. You know, you're you're bringing in a freshman and, and going to play them in a lot of quality snaps in Kyle Field. Um, but I thought they all rose to the occasion. They did. Uh, they didn't blink. You know, that's what we asked them to do. And Cam did a great job. You talk about Jordan Revels running around out there as, as well. But, you know, you've got uh, Day Jordan Mask, you know, and Kevin Anderson. Those are young kids that are getting quality reps, you know, and especially for a first game being in Kyle Field. So I'm uh, really pleased with how the freshmen play. Do you feel like – how much better do you feel like the defense will be able to do if the field positioning is better? Because I know Texas A&M started pretty close to the 50-yard line. Uh, you know, I, I think that's the mindset. We we knew we were going to be pretty decent on defense this year, and what we wanted the uh, the the emphasis with the defense is that we've got to win games on defense. You know, and I still think they're not in that spot yet. But with their backs against the wall, they still got to find ways to get out of it. And I think they're getting there. You know, I think A&M had nine trips, you know, inside the red zone, and we stopped them on four of them, I think, you know, which is pretty solid, you know, and uh, uh, that, that's the mindset we got to keep creating there. But, you know, definitely the defense will probably want to have good field position. The one time we had good field position at the start of the second half, you know, we decided to not be as aggressive on offense and go for it on fourth down and flip the field, and we pinned them on the six-yard line, and then they had the 86-yard run all the way to the opposite side. So, you know, I, I, we still got a lot of ways to go on all sides of the ball, but um, I just like where the defense has been rising to the occasion majority of the time. You know, first home game for you as a coach here at Texas State. How important is crowd for you, if, for fans to show up to this game up on Saturday? Uh, I think it's going to be huge. You know, it's uh, – that's something that we've been talking about. I've been going around to a lot of fraternities and sororities and, and student government you know, uh, groups and just trying to create some buzz and energy because uh, you know, our kids are putting a lot of work into this and we got to understand that we want to have a true home field advantage. We moved that, uh, you know, we moved the student section right behind the visitor's bench you know, for, to try to create a, an atmosphere that's tough to play in. You know? And I've, my experience with the visiting bench right behind uh, or the student section right behind the visiting bench has always been pretty uh, brutal on on us, and it just kind of gets annoying at times. But uh, we need the we need them to bring it this weekend. You know, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a hot game. You know, I think it's uh, uh it's, it's going to be great football weather for us to get out there because that sun sets. It's going to be a good Texas sunset, and it's going to be a good Texas night. So uh, we need the we need the fans to bring it, and you know, I think uh, I think our kids are excited to get out there and uh, and Wacker Field and, and 